Okay, Nikolai Adams from Filmazon.com here with Felix Silla. And in a weird way, I'm going I'm to start the interview off. In a way, we're related because you played Cousin Ed and my last name is Adams. Really? Wow. <laughs> so, so let's let's start with uh, your role as Cousin Ed on the famous Adams Family TV show. What, what are your memories of that? Uh, the memories are that uh, working in the Adams Family was such a great... Uh, uh, such a great opportunity to be there because we were like a family. Mm -hmm. uh, we got along with each other really well. Uh, I got to work with the, the best people, like a, a very professional actor, like a Sean Astin, mm -hmm. uh, Carolyn Jones, uh, uh, Jackie Coogan. He was, uh, you know, was mm -hmm. with the child actor. Yeah, exactly. He did a movie with Chaplin. The, yeah, with yeah. Charlie Chaplin, yeah. uh, the kid. Yeah. He was like, what, five years old? Exactly. And uh, Jackie Coogan uh, became like, they had a law, uh, the, they called the, the Coogan Law, mm -hmm. for the family to save money for the, the children, child actor, mm -hmm. put so much money into the, their bank account, mm -hmm. because last, a lot of the actors, they, when they grew up, they didn't have nothing. Exactly. They didn't yeah. have anything. They just, all the, you know, the parents they spend all the money they made. Mm -hmm. So that's why like, Jackie Coogan Law came out. Hmm. And uh, of course, Carolyn Jones was, you know, pretty professional, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And I got to work a little at Pugsley, in which yeah. we kind of lost him about a year ago. He passed away. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lisa Loring, so we do convention together. I see her nice. once in a while, yeah. That's fun, right? You get to catch yeah, up was, again. Yeah, we have a lot of fun, yes, yeah. Now let's go back. I, I was intrigued, you know, when you hear Barnum and Bailey and these famous circus. And you, you, you were a part of the circus, right? Yes. When I, actually, when I came from Italy, I came from Italy in 19, uh, November 24th, 1955. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a brother in the, state of, in the state of New York, okay. but near the city. Mm -hmm. uh, I came in 1955. Uh, 1956, I, want, I told them I want to go back home because I didn't like it was too cold. Mm -hmm. I didn't speak a word of English. Mm -hmm. I felt like I wasn't a brindle at some point. I don't know where I was. You know, mm -hmm. I just, I don't know anything. So, so I got, I went to work with Ringling Brothers Circus for about seven years until I, I decided to uh, uh, give up the circus and I, I stayed and I went to California in 1962. Wow. That's how I started working in the movie industry. So. And, and what was it like working in the circus? Is, is it, it's a different type of show business, obviously. Well, yes, I mean, you get to travel. We travel by trains. Mm -hmm. We had a, like, a, you know, we had a room in, where well, we sleep in a train, and mm -hmm. we traveled by one, from one street to another. Mm -hmm. uh, we got paid like $100 a, a week. It was a, well, those days were a lot of money. Not a bad job, yeah. yeah. In 1957, you know, it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, but when I worked with the circus, I didn't only work with Ringling Brothers, I worked with the other circus. Mm -hmm. And I did a bareback riding on a horse act, you know, I wow. ride horses. Yeah. So uh, I worked with a group from Italy that, uh, because I was born there, mm -hmm. uh, I worked with a group from Italy that did the movie The Great Show on Earth. I did a uh, horse uh, ride, bareback ride. Oh, wow. You know, like we did a pyramid and yeah. stuff, each other's shoulder and go run the ring. So the that's back. kind of really the start of the stunt, the stunt work, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm a big film noir fan, and one of those little known facts is that you were actually in the sequel of the Maltese Falcon. Yes, uh, yes, we it was called the, the the Blackbird. Yeah, it was the remake of the Maltese Falcon, mm -hmm. in which we had the original secretary, which she was like it was it was uh, Humphrey Bogart. Mm -hmm. She was 20 years old, and when we used her, 1973, she was like 80 years old. <laughs> and we used the same secretary yeah. at, the, at the movie that I played wow. with George Siegel. I had a lot of fun working with George. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's one of your movies where you're you're in full view. Yes, I had a lot of dialogue and full view. And I played one beautiful part, but really didn't do much for me. Mm -hmm. uh, they they released it with uh, together with another film. It was an X rated. Oh. And so they kind of ruined everything. So. It's not going far with that. No, it didn't really do <laughs> much for me, for my career. Yeah. So a lot of people don't even know, because they know, who knows it's still over someplace. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, one of the stories that I came across that I thought, found fascinating was your work on E.T. Oh, E.T., yeah. yes. So can you tell the story, because I'm sure most people don't know the, the little secret of your well, role in E.T. Yes, I got to work with uh, Spielberg quite a bit. Uh, I did a movie with him. But he used me in a movie in 1941, that he was directing. And then I worked uh, 
again, the poltergeist, uh, I was doing some stunts for a little kid, and the one that got pulled out the window, the tree, mm -hmm. and I did E.T., and uh, I doubled for uh, Drew Barrymore when she was six years old, or six or seven years old. We were playing like, uh, uh, we were going up and down the street doing like a trick or treat during mm -hmm. the Halloween. Mm -hmm. I had this, uh, like a pillowcase over my face with two little all in the eye. Was doing, I was a Casper the Franklin Ghost. <laughs> that was supposed to be her. Yeah. But, <clears throat> you know, they don't, it was late at night and mm -hmm. they, they not allowed the kids to work after so many hours. Mm -hmm. So she had to go home. So they called me up and says, hey, uh, how would you like to come up on location and do a little work for us? Mm -hmm. I know Steve, you know, Steve yeah. Philbin, a nice guy. Uh, I got to double her when she was seven years, seven years old, yeah. Now, one of the stories that I heard that sounded very uh, nerve-wracking was when you were working as a stunt double on Temple of Doom. Oh, uh, yeah, the raft. Yeah, oh, yeah. tell us, tell, tell uh, everyone yeah, about we, that. Um, uh, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun at that one. Um, I, I'm not a swimmer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't swim from here to there. Um, so they got me in this raft. The stunt man told me, he says, I told the guys, look, I don't swim. I don't even swim a stroke. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. We put the you know the May West with a jacket on mm -hmm. you, and I said don't panic. If anything happened, just pull on the string. Well, okay. So we got in the raft. We going down down the river. It was me, uh, the stunt man for Harrison Ford, mm -hmm. and the stunt lady for Kate Capshaw. Mm -hmm. So we going down the river, and we were on that side of the river, and the cameras on this side. So <clears throat> we go down the river, we were down like in a hole. He's supposed to go down and come up and mm -hmm. level off and continue on. So what happened? What happened? It went down and it came up and it kept going, you know, like completely flipped upside down. Wow. And I'm, I'm stuck under there. Mm -hmm. I was the only one in there. The other two, they jumped, fell off. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the guy said, oh, don't panic. If anything happened, you know, pull on the string. Mm -hmm. said, okay. So I'm pulling and pulling. That thing is happening. And all of a sudden, I really got, I didn't panic, I got really, really hard. I got yanked like this, like this, and I'm underneath there. I don't know if I was in a pocket of hair. Mm -hmm. I could see all clean water in there and the yellow over my head, but the bottom of the, yeah. the raft was yellow. Wow. And I'm thinking, I said, what What should I do? Let it loose or mm -hmm. hang on? So I hang on the, on the string, and, and finally the guy came and got me out, and he says, well, look, I was, I was pulling your leg and he didn't want to let it go. I said, come on, pull my leg. You know, he was not pulling anything. Yeah. I said, what do you think it's so long? And I, well, so anyway, he got me out and, um, and then a, a Steven Spielberg found, found out that uh, the accident, what happened, mm -hmm. and he said uh, to the stuntman, the uh, stunt coordinator, I don't want Felix to do any more water work mm -hmm. because I need him to finish the film. Yeah. But see, we were, what we were doing, we were doing the second unit, mm -hmm. because what, what happened in London, uh, Harrison Ford, he hurt himself, mm -hmm. so they sent him home to California to recuperate, to go to the hospital, because he hurt his back. So we were doing the second unit, all the stunt work, mm -hmm. without him, as we had all the stunt people. And that's when uh, Stephen said, well, Felix, I don't want him to do any more work, because we have to fly back to London to do more work. Mm -hmm. So we went all over the place. and. Wow. Uh, there was a little story, a kind of scary story, that uh, uh, for about six months after that, almost every night I got some, this kind of nightmare. I'm, uh, you know, I feel like I, I, want, I was dying. So it, it felt kind of funny. It felt and and kind that of was scary. from the, from the from stress the, of yeah, dealing yeah. with the, the rap yeah, well? Yeah, it, it went on, that went off after a while, but almost every, every night I got this, line, you know, remember what I, I got stuck under there. And, not you know not being a swimmer mm -hmm. wow. whatever i mean you know thank god i'm here so exactly yeah it. wow and yeah. now let's talk about steven spielberg what type of director is he oh my god the, steven spielberg spielberg is one of the best mm -hmm. one of the best i mean the reason he's one of the best is because he does his own work at the studio i mean at the at the office the night before mm -hmm. before he comes on the set he looks at the script he knows exactly what he wants for the next day. Mm -hmm. he, he, uh, he studies the script, he says, this is what I want, and it's gonna get done. Mm -hmm. uh, one day we were on the set earlier, earlier, you know, before the filming, and, he, and we were talking, and, and he looked at me and he said, hey, Felix, says, you know what, if you were this, this much shorter, mm -hmm. I could use you in my second ET, in which 
and have a king and have a will and yeah. a thing, you know. <laughs> I don't think they're ever going to do a second EP, no. but it was, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed Steve, yeah, Steve yeah. was a great guy. And, and nice, frankly, too. It's very smart. That's what I've heard. You have very yeah. intellectual rate. He knows what he's doing. Oh, yes, yeah. Now, let's go to uh, to Buck Rogers, you know, another, oh, another yes. famous role. What, what are your memories of doing that? Well, the memory was uh, I had to compete, but, you know, we had the interview. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the only one that, uh, I wasn't the only one right there. So I, had to, I had to compete in the interview with other people. They were going to... Uh, they had in mind they were going to put in on a suit they were going to put a chimp a chimpanzee mm -hmm. or a monkey. Mm -hmm. How how can you make a, an animal? How can you put all that suit and let them stand and walk? Yeah. You know, that's impossible. Yeah. But the fun memory was what uh, Gil, which you know Buck Rogers, Gil mm -hmm. Gerard, uh, when he when I had to go in the, in the, inside the ship, I could not climb, walk on stairs because the suit wasn't that flexible. Yeah. He had to pick me up. And he says, every time he had to pick me up and put me inside the, the ship, mm -hmm. he said, damn, Phil, you're getting fat. <laughs> and I used to say, I don't know if I could say or not, but yeah, go for he it. says, come on, Gil, fuck off, you. shut up. <laughs> every time he did it, damn, Phil, you're getting fat, but shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, shut up. <laughs> you know, that's what I used to tell him. He said, yeah. leave me alone. You know, put me in, you know. The, the, they, we had a lot of fun about Roger. We had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, yeah. It was a, very close to my house. Uh, but I had to be there all the time, you know, mm -hmm. from early in the morning to late at night, uh, mm -hmm. because, I mean, they have to protect themselves in case something goes wrong, mm -hmm. and then they just, uh, they come to you and say, look, we need the scene, we'll get ready. Mm -hmm. uh, one time I was ready to go on, and and I, I'm sitting, standing there, or sitting, whatever, because if I took this, the, like a skirt type off and a mask, mm -hmm. I could sit, you know, smoking, I'm so, cup of coffee, whatever. Mm -hmm. One day I'm fully dressed, and I asked the, uh, the assistant director, Bob, I said, Bob, I need to go to the bathroom. We were just doing a rehearsal. I wasn't even involved. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, can you wait five minutes? I said, okay, I'll wait five minutes. Uh, five minutes came by, hey, Bob, I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, finally, I called the, the, the wardrobe guy, Paul. I said, hey, Paul, take off the shit, and I need to go. Yeah. You know? So I came back half an hour later, they were still playing around with whatever the hell they were doing. I mean, <laughs> see, what they got to try, these guys try to do, they try to kind of protect their job. Yeah. I mean, if he said, okay, go to the bathroom, and then all of a sudden the director said, okay, we, re we need him, why don't you let him go? Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, hey, when nature, nature calls, you got to do it, you got to go. You know, you can't just, you know, I'm not going to pee in my pants while I'm filming. That's the you tough know, part, though, being know. in costume, right? <laughs> it's it's, like, yeah. But, but uh, now, now let's go. You had a small, uh, a very interesting kind of little scene in, in *Planet of the Apes*. Yes, with the uh, with the Charles Charles Nestor when he ran across the across the museum. I tell you, mm -hmm. uh, I told him like you know, I said, hey, it's a man or whatever. Uh, there's somebody else going on. Said, no, I, I was the guy. He said, he said, I was there when I was ten years old. I did this stuff. There was nobody ten years old when we were filming that. I was I was <laughs> bad. I was the guy, not it. Somebody else said, oh, I did that. Wow. Uh, Chuck was a really, Charlton Nestor was a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, those days, well, when we were filming the, play, the very first play in the Apes, he was our uh, president of Screen Actor Guild. Okay. And every morning, they used to bring me in uh, by helicopter. Okay. We were on location, like uh, at uh, Fox Ranch. And they used to pick him up, whatever, at the office or home, and fly him right in the set, <laughs> drop him off at night, come and pick him up, take him home. and. And on lunchtime, he used to run exercise. He was so skinny, then he was anyway. Exactly. He used yeah. to run all over, you know, mm -hmm. keeping keep in shape. So, um, that's all, that's all uh, Planet of the Apes. It's, uh, really, it was fun working with the people. Huh? Now, Star Wars. That's a well, big Star one. Star Wars is really nice, yeah. We, uh, I got to travel to England a few times uh, with three other little guys. We went to have a special suit made. Because mm -hmm. we did. I did a lot of a lot of flying mm -hmm. on ropes and things, and and they had to have a, we had to have a, the suit a little more flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, the other guys in the background, you know, about a hundred, hundred fifty little people, they they look kind of round, you know, more foam, and they didn't have to kind of do anything. Mm -hmm. They just some of them just fell asleep while we were filming. <laughs> but, you know, the costume blends with the exactly with the, yeah. with the, the leaves. Yeah. You know, they just lay down and fall asleep. Yeah. You know? A couple of guys did for real. And, wow. Uh, wow. So it was a very, very nice film to work with. Yeah. Uh, 
we filmed uh, quite a bit in uh, in the redwoods in California. Mm -hmm. uh, we stayed down below the Highway One going. We were between Oregon and California. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, we had about three different motels with all the people in it. They even they even built a basketball court in there for us to play around. And oh wow! Every morning at six o'clock and. The school bus you come and pick us up to go to the mountain, uh, do a little work or whatever, and go down you know, down below and eat and go to bed, and, and next morning do the same thing. But it was it was a really nice uh, nice movie. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed the work with him. Uh, it, George uh, George Luke is a really wonderful man. And, mm -hmm. uh, George is kind of shy, you know. He's not like Spielberg. Mm -hmm. They're two different people. Yeah, George just take. Typically, like businessman, mm -hmm. he could say good morning, or good night, or whatever. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. He don't, he don't have a conversation with him, you know, mm -hmm. unless, unless you're doing to make a deal, and then you could say to make a deal about billions of dollars. <laughs> like you know, they were all Disney studio. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, George is a little more shy than Steve. Steve yeah. and Spielberg is fun to work with. They're both fun to work with. So. Uh, we we had a lot of fun. Star Wars, a great show. Now the kind of the, the opposite of that is Spaceballs. What was it like to well, work yeah, with Mel Brooks? Well, Mel Brooks is a funny guy, man. Uh, uh, that what's it? Uh, yogurt, whatever your name is. Yeah. You heard of me? Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <clears throat> we filmed uh, uh, we filmed that part in uh, the uh, the sand dunes in Yuma, Arizona. Mm -hmm. My God, I mean, we were running around, sand flying all over the place, and. <laughs> Uh, John Candy one day said uh, it was his birthday, and really loud while we were filming, said, "God damn it! Look what I'm doing on my birthday! Carry the freaking trunk all over the sand dunes in Arizona." <laughs> and Mel said, "What are you talking about? We're filming. Said, That's what I mean. Freaking trunk on my birthday. What am I doing here?" Uh, too bad, you know. Kind of lost him too. Yeah, it was a great guy. Canadian actor. A really good guy. Yeah. The uh, now that must have been warm though. You were in that dark brown yes, cave, we, right? Uh, it was a little warm. Yeah, I mean, Yuma gets pretty, uh, pretty hot, and uh, we had all these guys waiting and they couldn't wait for us to leave. All these guys in sand dunes, they got to go in the buggy, you know. They, they were cussing loud. You know, How long are you gonna be here, you guys? You're gonna leave. We gotta go play with fun. You know, they rent the place. They pay money. So. Yeah. You know, you gotta wait for your turn. So the one line I always yeah. love in that movie is "comb the desert," and they're Com using the combs. <laughs> With Rick Moranis. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the now, now the last question: a yeah. movie that you you've seen and that has kind of stuck with you. You know, one of your favorite films that you've watched, not necessarily something you've worked in, but just a movie that you know you really like that's stuck with you all these years. Uh, not, 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 nothing to do with my career. Yeah, nothing to do with your career. You know what? The best movie that I really like, I, I watch it most of the time when, I, when it's available. I like the movie called The High Noon. Oh, yes. Gary Cooper. The Western. Yeah, I love yeah. Westerns. Yeah. I, I love Westerns. Um, they don't make a good Western. Well, they don't make any good Western yeah, anymore because they don't know what to do. Yeah, know? yeah. So, I love Western movies. What a wonderful cast. You know, you got Lon Chaney oh, in that God. small role yeah. and Grace Kelly and yeah. it's just beautiful stuff, you know, I don't think, uh, those, those days, uh, they're gone, you know, the, mm -hmm. the 60s, the 70s. I moved to California in 62, and mm -hmm. I kind of retired in 1995, I just gave it up, I said, well, you know, nothing going on, mm -hmm. and uh, 2003, I moved to Las Vegas, and I'm kind of happy because uh, I have more pe I have more friends there in tw 12 years mm -hmm. than I had in 45 years in California. Wow. Working. Yeah. You know, you work, you go somebody working, and okay, he's gone, and they're gone, you mm -hmm. know, ne probably never see him again, mm -hmm. or maybe you see him again at the unemployment office, in which that's where it was. I mean, yeah. We used to go to unemployment office when he, we were not working. Wow. You know, collect, we see your friends, and we all get, you know, at the unemployment office yeah. almost every Friday. Wow. But uh, I, I'm, I'm really happy with Vegas, and uh, and I'm really happy what I'm doing. I'm just traveling and doing convention. And get to meet people. And yes, I just did. Uh, we just did five days in Vegas at the big Star Trek convention. Wow! Five days, man. It was hard. It's quite the quite the quite the event. Oh yes, Star Trek in Vegas is big every year. It gets bigger and bigger every year. And this year was the 50th anniversary. Hmm. So there were a lot of people there. Oh, yeah. that's good. A lot and of people come from all over the place. They go Australia. I see people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. you know, same thing with the. Oh, we have to talk about Star Wars a little bit. 
Star Wars the same thing. Yeah. You know? I mean, Star Wars and Star Trek, they're two different things. I mean, they, they compete, but they're different. Well, they're a little, you know, I, I hate to say this, but I love them both. But I think Star Trek is a little bit more refined. Yeah. Uh, all the guys, you know, the Stormtrooper. I'm, I'm an honorary member mm -hmm. of Star Wars uh, because I played one of the Ewok. Uh, on the, you know, I watched the guy in the glider from the front. Yeah, rocks. exactly, yeah. Uh, they do a lot of nice things. You know, they raise money for, you know, kids in hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, they do parades. And they really do nice things, yeah. But then, so your memories at, uh, on set in Star Trek were, were just as fond? It's, uh, it's, it's so, yeah, uh, the, the, the original pilot that I worked on, yeah. uh, one of the television. I didn't know think about it. That I wasn't brand new in the business. Mm -hmm. And we had this weird mask. Like a big all, if we seen the, yeah. know, the pop or what it called, it's a uh, uh, we couldn't even talk to each other. We couldn't even talk to each other. We were three three guys, little guys. We we used to go to lunch mm -hmm. and we look at each other. We couldn't say anything. We couldn't, we couldn't hear each other talking. Mm. So that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, it's uh, you know it was the Jeffrey Hunter who was there, wonderful actor. He did a beautiful job. But he, you know, he, he's gone, mm -hmm. he passed away way early. I don't know what happened, I think he died in the, what's about, like in the 40s, 40 years old. So, everything I've done, I had, I enjoyed it. Uh, I never had any bad, you know, films or any bad jobs. Mm -hmm. Even if I had a little problem, I didn't take it home with me, I just left it. That's but the... we never had any problem, I just got, they got along with me, I got along with them, and that's what it counts, you mm -hmm. know, you got along with everybody. And I tell you, if this everybody we got along with each other, the world will be way different. I agree with you what there. We, what what's going on? What's going on in this world today? You know, I don't I don't know where we go. In this country is going to the toilet. Well, let, let's 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 end it at that. What a wonderful career, and thank you so All much. Right. Thank you so much, and uh, you're welcome. That was.